more restaurants are letting customers know where their ingredients come from. But where do the recipes come from? At Kitchen in Boston South End, the origin of each delicious dish is printed right on the menu. These recipes have been around for a long time. Scott Herod is Kitchen's chef and owner. He loves old cookbooks and has an extensive collection. Well, there's something about holding the book. I mean, the leather bound, you know, there's notes in some of these books that says good recipe or make this one Sunday, you know, so you get the history. So when Scott opened Kitchen, he wanted to serve what he called time honored cuisine, paying homage to the classic recipes he found in those vintage cookbooks while still giving them a touch of his own. It's almost kind of like, you know, when someone redoes a Beatles song, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> But you want to take it and you want to make it your own and you want people to love your version. But, you know, obviously there's a high bar set. The menu at Kitchen is filled with classic dishes and lists the dates those recipes were created, like oversized bacon wrapped scallops circa 1931, mock turtle soup circa 1860, and one of the standards of steak preparation, Tornado's Rossini. I mean, this is a dish that they've been making, you know, since 1826. And I think even today, some chefs are measured on how well they could make this dish. It's pan seared beef tenderloin. It's topped with faux gras. It's served with a Madeira black truffle sauce. We serve it on top of a toasted bread and a side of creamy uh, cheesy spinach. It's hearty. <laughs> When it comes to richness, nothing beats the lobster thermidor. It's loaded with chunks of lobster, Parisian gnocchi, cheese, spinach, and cream, and topped with toasted breadcrumbs. This is a dish fit for a queen, and it's a favorite of Kitchen's general manager, Melissa Healy. I know lobster mac and cheese is kind of the new thing now, but you get the small pieces of lobster, and it's really the lobster stock that's giving it the flavor. This is definitely the lobster meat that's giving it the flavor. Big chunks of lobster, the cheese gnocchi, it's wonderful. For something a little lighter, the half-roasted chicken is perfectly cooked and extra flavorful thanks to a long-forgotten process of baking the bird in hay. In a lot of the cookbooks I found, they used to bake chicken in hay. It adds a sweetness to the dish, and it really perfumes the chicken with a nice aroma. I think that it makes sense. I mean, chickens basically live in hay. They eat around hay. They lay eggs in their hay. So chicken, hay, sure. The dishes coming out of Kitchen's Open Kitchen represent the origins of foods we know and love today, like the precursor to the hamburger, the 19th century Hamburg steak with mushroom gravy, shoestring potatoes, and Roquefort butter. It's basically ground seasoned beef with onions and garlic, and it's pan fried to temperature, and I guess somewhere around the 1920s, they started adding the hamburger bun to it, and they became the hamburger. Another meal with humble beginnings is the hearty pork and beans also known as son of a gun. With house-made sausage, cider glazed ribs, and a pork meatball, you'll need to cowboy up if you want to finish this dish. When they show you the movies of all the cowboys standing around the campfire and they're eating that bean dish, that's son of a gun. That's definitely one of those dishes that I tell people they have to be in it to win it. They have to really commit to it because it's big and it's filling and it's wonderful, but they really have to be hungry. If you have any room for dessert, the old fashioned donuts are a must order. We fry them to order, we toss them in cinnamon sugar, we put them on a blueberry compote, we put a little vanilla sauce on the bottom, and you're encouraged to pick them up, but they're right out of the fryer, so they're a little hot. Rounding out the kitchen experience are classic tunes spinning on the record player, classic cocktails made the old fashioned way, and a classically cozy dining room filled with customers thirsty for knowledge. They're not just sitting down to eat a dish, they're sitting down and they're learning something, and that makes people really excited. While the meal may start with a little bit of history, the main course is simply great food, no matter what century it's from. At the end of the day, despite the circuit dates and everything, we wanted to make those recipes taste good and make the customers happy and present them with good service and a nice, cozy atmosphere. So for a delicious taste of the past, a trip to kitchen should definitely be in your future. Yeah.